Howdy guys. All right, so in this video, what I wanted to do was walk through the new RBD SOP solvers that are available in Houdini 18. And I wanted to go and set up a whole sim. So what we're going to do is we're going to build this building. We're going to set up the sim and then we're going to destroy it. All right. So we're going to walk through a lot of cool techniques for this stuff. So let's get started. Okay, so to get started here, what I'm going to do is go and create some sort of building type of structure. So I'm just going to call this building. Like so, I just created a geometry node. And I'm going to go and drop down a grid here inside of my building node there. And I'm going to set the size to something like, let's say, 3 by 3 I'm just going to make something like a simple tower with many floors on it. All right, and I'm going to go and resample this. Uh, that way I can actually go and grab a bunch of you know, sections of this and create walls out of it. So I'm going to say that, you know, Every wall maybe is about two meters. And let's say we're going to resample by polygon edge, like so. Awesome. And we'll leave it all like that. And then the next thing I want to do is we're going to drop down a convert line node. There we go. And this will then turn this into a bunch of different individual primitives there. All right, cool. So then I'm going to do a carve here really quick. And I'm going to do my equal offset trick. All right, so I'm going to go and copy the first U paste it into the second U as a relative reference, and we're going to do one minus. This way I get an equal offset on both sides of my individual segments there. Cool. So with that, let's drop down a new sweep node here. All right. And we're going to utilize the ribbon feature for this because I'm basically going to build the bases for these walls here. Awesome. And then with that, let's go and drop down a copy to transform node. And let's just move these guys up. Let's say three actually let's do two and why and we'll make a bunch of copies for this do something like yeah five copies is fine then let's drop down a skin node and we'll skin that together so we actually have some geometry so we're gonna have to actually utilize the skip every nth point and just get this guy situated until we are good all right so now we got a bunch of walls let's go and create the individual floors now so what i'm going to do is branch off over here and we're going to do a poly extrude. All right, there we go. I'm going to hit shift S on the keyboard to get a different wire look. And then I'm going to go and just lift this guy up. So this is going to become my floor. All right, I'm going to make sure to output the back. because so we're going to fracture this with the material fracture node. And so we want solid objects for the most part. All right, very cool. So before I get too far, let's make sure that we actually cap these guys as well. You can see we have open ends there, so let's drop down a uh, poly cap node, like so. And we'll just cap all those guys off again, so we have solid pieces of geometry. Alright, so let's copy this copy and transform node, and I'm going to wire that into this guy right here to create all of my floors. Alright, with that, we can now merge these two guys. So I'm just going to hold down Alt on the keyboard, hover over my output, and then just left click and drag to create a merge node, just to see how things are coming along. All right, it might be kind of nice too to also have some horizontal structures on the outside there. So let's go and actually let's redo that again. So let's merge this guy again. There we go. Well, let's go and copy this guy. And let's pull off from the grid again. All right, and then let's use a sweep node for this. Awesome. And we're going to set this to a surface shape of a square tube. And then I'm just going to put the columns down like so. And then we'll output this guy into that same merge node there. Awesome. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Cool. Yeah. So now we're starting to get a nice little building. Now we just need some pillars for the outsides there. That is looking pretty cool so far. So this is a relatively easy as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to need to get this guy because this is where all the points are. So I can go and copy a grid uh, to this as well. So let's do that. We're going to do a grid and let's make a little bit of space for ourselves over here. And I'm going to drop down a copy to points and we're going to wire that in for the first input and that for the second input. And let's go and set this to one and one for the size. Let's put it also onto the X, Y plane and put in two and two for the rows and columns. And while we're at it, let's just hook this guy up because I just want these guys to be square. And then I'm going to make them just a little bit smaller. Awesome. So now all I need to do is just um, extrude these guys up. So we'll say poly extrude. 
And we will extrude it up by two. And we need to make sure we reverse this guy up here. There we go. And let's output the back. So we have a closed shape. And then we can utilize our copy and transform node to make a bunch of copies of those guys. And then we'll basically merge that in. There we go. We just make, need to make sure we don't do the last one. So let's just do four for this guy. Awesome. So now we got a building that we can destroy. Cool. All right. So the process for this is to first just go and set up a material fracture node. So an RBD material fracture node. We're going to take our whole building here and just pump that right into that first input. And what I'm going to do is leave it on the concrete type. You're more than welcome to try out these other ones. Uh, just keep in mind that the wood uh, material type will take quite a while to uh, process. All right, so let's take a look at the results here. Sweet. So we got, you know, a nice fractured piece of geometry. And we want to go and destroy all this stuff. But before we do, um, I want to go and also turn on my chipping here and just walk through some of these particular features of this. Awesome. So basically what it's doing is it's creating these little chip pieces. So we can actually increase this to something like 0.8. And that'll add even more chips. And we can also do the corner depth. So if we do something like 0.1, we'll get uh, bigger chips. And this is really cool for these types of simulations because it basically are these little chunks that you know start to break away from these larger chunks. Makes it look just more realistic. Yeah. All right, so I think I'm gonna go with that. Okay, so the next step to get this rolling is to drop down an RBD bullet solver. Awesome. And what we want to do uh, inside of this RBD bullet solver is turn on the ground right off the bat. That way we have something to collide with. So I'm going to turn on the ground and we're good to go. If I actually hit play right now, we will get this guy falling to the ground. Awesome. Look at that. Pretty quick to get a really nice simulation set up, but it goes even further. And what I'm going to do is show you guys a little bit about the constraints before I close out this particular video. All right, so let's stop that and let's go and wire in this little pink dot right here. That's the constraints that the material fracture node is actually creating for us. All right, and if we were to actually go down and drop down an RBD explode node, where are you? Let me actually type, there it is, exploded view. All right, so if we were to actually pump the geometry and the constraints into this exploded view and turn that on and then check on show constraints you can see these are all the constraints so they're little wires think of them as like glue that's holding all these pieces together and they all have different you know strengths so if i were to actually go and turn on the constraint strength you can see that we have these values from blue to red and the differences in their strength and their bond to one another all right so with that let's take a look at our simulation now okay and I don't need that guy on anymore. Cool. So now I've got the constraints all hooked up. Let's hit play. And you can see the building's not doing anything. Well, why is that? Well, currently, if we go back to our material fracture node and we go into the constraints tab, our primary strength currently is set to 10,000. And that's really strong. So let's set this to something like 1,000 and see what happens. Let's go back to the beginning of the timeline, hit play. And we're still getting pretty strong values. All right, so let's go and put this down to something like 400. All right, and we're still sticking. And that is because we are utilizing currently the chipping features. And the chipping glue strength is pretty high right now, too. So let's set that one down to like 100. And that'll just make it so the chips will fall out first. All right, so let's hit play. And we're still not getting anything. And this is because we need to go and turn on this fracture per piece. So I'm going to set my timeline back to 1 and turn on fracture per piece. All right, so with that all set up, let's hit play after it's finished calculating here, which, you know, the more you, that you fracture, the longer it's gonna take for these simulations to get done, but that's why I'm keeping it relatively simple. All right, so there we go, we're rolling. So you notice now that the chips are gonna fall out first, so if we were to zoom in here a little bit, so the little chips are falling out of the building first, and once it starts to lose more of its structural integrity, uh, because we have the primary strength set to 400, the rest of the building will start to, start to fall as well. So I'm going to let this roll here for a second longer. See if we can't get the building to fall. Looks like it's starting to buckle a little bit over here.
And there we go. So finally enough chips fell out of the building and now the whole thing is just coming down. Very cool. All right, so hopefully that clears things up with the constraints and just how to, to start to work with them and start to adjust it for the look that you're going for, for the building. The last thing I want to show is how you can add a custom force to this. So like what, let's say I want to, you know, have an explosion at the bottom of the building down here. So let's just say maybe right over here. Um, what I need to do is I need to come over here and I'm going to drop down a group node and I'm going to take in the proxy geometry that's coming out of the material fracture. So that's that third output right there. And I'm going to call this the uh, blast uh, points like so. All right, and I'm going to set the group type to points. Very cool. And we're going to go and we are going to turn off our base group and go to keep it within bounding regions. And I'm going to set it to a bounding sphere. Uh, you can use a box as well. I uh, just really want to simulate more of like a, you know, an explosion, a blast. So let's move this guy out over here uh, because I want all these points to be affected by the initial blast. All right, so we're going to determine an area on our building where the blast will be affected the most. Basically, you just want to blow away this whole bottom half and just have the building just fall down. All right, so on those points, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down a point uh, velocity node like so. Very cool. And we are going to go get this name here for the group. Put that in the group here because this is looking for a point group. All right. And in this case, I want to use the conical noise all right, to simulate something like a, an actual explosion. Awesome. So I'm going to actually drop my direction in Y down to 0.5 and make this in one in the Z direction. All right. So just reference your little gizmo down here. And then let's set the scale to something like 30. And then what we're going to do is we are going to then pass the output of this into the proxy geometry for our RBD bullet solver node. All right. So let's take a look at that now. So let's go back to the first frame of the timeline, hit play, and we should see a big blast down at the bottom of the building right there. Like it just got exploded. <laughs> awesome. And so I'm going to let this run just a little bit longer so we can see the full effects. Very cool. And that is how easy it is to set up. So the last thing I want to show when this is all done running through here, I might speed up the video just a little bit, uh, just to get through the sim, is I want to show you guys how to cache all this stuff out so you don't have to actually resim it every single time you want to take a look at it, especially when you want to go to render this out. All right, so I'm going to clamp it out there at 160 frames. Let's go back one more frame. All right, so let's just put in 160 for here and take a look at that one more time because it's cool. All right, so the next thing that we want to do is we want to drop down a file cache node. Let's do that. All right, so let's go and take the output of our bullet solver and put it into the input of this file cache. And what I want to do is I'm going to Hold down control and shift on the keyboard because I want to set my own custom frame range here. We're going to say 1 to 160 and I'm going to go and pick the folder location. So I have a project currently and I'm going to select the cache folder that I have in there. And I'm going to call this, let's actually just use this name over here. We'll actually we'll call this BLDG01 and then we need uh, .bgo.sc. And then I'll just put a dot dollar f for the frame number and with that all we need to do is go and hit save to disk and what it'll do is it'll write out the whole simulation to uh, these bgo files all right that way we can then once it's done it goes pretty quick we can just hit, hit this little checkbox to load it from disk and we can come down here to this little button it's little brain and we can turn off all simulations but you can see now we still have our building destruction running really fast there we go. And you can see that dynamic simulation is disabled. All right, so that's how you build a building really quick. It's not a fancy building, but it gets the job done. And how we set up a, a really quick destruction simulation using the new RBD bullet solver node and this material fracture node and how to actually add our own forces and then finally how to cache it out to files. All right, hopefully that helps. Thanks so much.